Hello everybody, my name is Leo and welcome to a new tutorial from Blau Films. It's been a week so it's time for a new tutorial so I thought I would just let you into some of my creative process while uh, working on this shot. First of all I would like to thank my friend Gigi Gagan Singh who directed this short film Famished. It's close to being released and he allowed me to use one of his shots to show a process that we went through of doing a little bit of sky replace. This shot is quite a particular example because it makes a full tripod pan almost nearing a 180 degree turn and then lands on this position. But we do need to make a 3D track inside of After Effects and then create a camera and stitch a bunch of cloud assets one after the other to make sure we get this long full banner of sky. I will first go in and show you what I did already and then we can finish off the shot together and uh, yeah I think it should be fun. So the shot right here as you can see is very flat it was shot on the C700 so the first thing I did is I added Cineon Converter that's an effect that when you put the conversion type to log the linear, you get something like a Rec 709 color profile. That effect is up here in effect under utility, and then you have Cineon converter. For the 3D track, I created a duplicate of that layer. I used the exposure effect and I took down the gamma to make sure we have the strong silhouette of everything except for the sky. I exported that as a ProRes file and then I re-imported it and I used the 3D camera track. So the next layer we have over here is a duplicate of the original clip. I applied effect, color correction, exposure, and then I took down the gamma to be almost 0.1. So we have a strong mat of our environment and then we have the sky over here that's still clear. I exported that as a ProRes file and re-imported it and that's when I went to animation and track camera. That gives you the 3D camera tracker. It took about 9 minutes to track this shot, about 1000 frames. I um, specified a few of these things. We have a fixed angle of view. Basically what this means is that we're not zooming inside of the shot. Under the advanced tab, I put the solve method to tripod pan. I was on set when this shoot happened, so I remember this was the case. If you don't know how your shot was shot, then I would either go for auto detect or for me, if you are tracking something that's very far away, I would suggest using a mostly flat scene. That was it, and then I selected detailed analysis. After I ran through, I got all of these points, and if I scrub through the scene, these stay on pretty well. All the way until the end here, they're still there. They have a full 180 degree turn that's been tracked over here. So what I did is I selected some of these points, I selected three of them, make sure that your bullseye is standing straight up and looking right at you because the background of the sky is going to be a straight plane. You select these points, right click, and then I created a null and the camera. That option is not available for me right now as I already have a camera. Here you can very clearly see what it is that the camera does. We stay straight and then at some point when Tony starts moving and walking to the left side, camera starts making a tripod pan, we go and we go and we go, and oh wow, all the way there. We can turn that layer off and then what I did is I made a mat. This is going to be our Luma mat that will include or exclude the cloud backplates that we're going to be using. I created this by simply using a colorama filter with an output cycle that looks a bit like this. A bunch of white and some strong black. And then you just move them around until you get your shot to work. There are some spots on Tony's hat that are still shining through. Especially here you can see that his face mask and his uh, brighter white hair right underneath. But we're going to be fixing that later with some simple masks that are going to make some adjustments to just these areas. Then the next thing I've been doing, which is the fun part, is actually composing the sky. So from the many discussions I've had with Gigi, I do kind of know what kind of films he likes and what kind of style of drama he likes inside of his skies. I pulled up Princess Mononoke, two shots from there, um, Fellowship of the Ring, I believe this is the Two Towers, or no, it's Return of the King, I think. 
and then one more from Fellowship, Tree of Life, and The Banishment. These are all great movies, but today we're only going to be looking at them as a reference. What I really like about this Princess Mononoke example is how layered everything looks. You get the sense that there's a lot of depth in this image, and there are clouds all the way up here and all the way tiny in the background fading away. I think this shot from Mononoke is absolutely wonderful. There's this beautiful cross composition going on here with the brights and the darks. We have the darks up here and then we have this patch that's on the brighter side over here and then we have the brightest side right here which is then contrasted by reflecting the dark side in this bottle over here. Everything feels very balanced to me. I also like the god rays that are coming from here, but I don't think I will be using them. I feel like I'm mostly going to be focusing on having some really dark clouds more towards the end of the rotation of the shot. So this shot is absolutely iconic. The like about this shot is the amount of saturation that's going on inside of the actual clouds. When we look at the shot from Famished, it's obviously an overcast day, so we're going to be working with overcast cloud assets. They're not going to be looking like the ones we see here in Fellowship. Then I feel like this would be the most important reference, similar to the one up top from Mononoke. When I think of this moment in the actual short film, this is very close to the beginning of the film. Tony's character is surviving with his family, with his wife and his granddaughter in this cabin in the woods after a post-apocalyptic gas pandemic and right at this point he has been and right at this point he has just been cutting up some wood he's going to walk towards this area where he has planted some turnips in the hope that he will have some food unfortunately everything has gone bad and nothing is growing i do like the idea of making this area of the shot a much darker shot literally as if there is a cloud hanging over his head and over his house it's just going to emphasize that everything after this point in the story is going to be much more dramatic and uncomfortable and they're in for a very negative ride so we have a 3d camera we have a background now the next thing you need are cloud assets i'm using my own clouds um here's the overcast cloud pack you can get it when you go to artstation.com, LM Verkoelen, and then to store, overcast cloud pack over here. I will leave a link in the description to get these assets. And if you found these assets through this tutorial, use this coupon code that's on the frame right now, and you'll get another 20% off. So the way I work is I go into my assets folder, click on one, I command I to pop up the info window, and then I look, oh, the focal length is 17, which is probably a bit too wide for the shot that we're going with right now. So I could either use this asset and crop in a bit, or I could look a bit further, and this one has a focal length of 41, which seems to be about right for what we're working with. Then the next step I would do is I would come in and I would import that asset by just drag and dropping it inside. The first thing that will happen is we will get a uh, camera raw pull up window and got to make sure to match our shot. The first thing that I'm noticing is that our temperature is too cold. So I'm going to bump that up to about 5500. Then the next thing is I'm going to take some magenta out and bring it back a bit more towards the green. The exposure can go up a bit, the shadows can go down, so we get some of these stronger shadows that we're seeing in these images on our reference. And yeah, I'm giving it a little bit of a vibrance. The next thing that's important is go to the lens correction menu, remove chromatic aberration, and enable profile corrections. I have done this process with a few other images, as you can see in my timeline. I have image 3893, I added that image and I made it a 3D layer and then I pushed it back into Z-Space to almost 10,000. Now I just scaled it and made sure that it stays somewhere nicely. I'm using my Luma mat right on top and I'm changing the track mat to Luma. This is just temporary because at the end I will combine all of these 
images together and make them track mat just one Luma channel so that we can make some final adjustments on the Luma mat. I've added this one as well, which I've masked out on the side. Just a mask, subtract, feather, and a mask expansion just to dial in the correct settings. And then finally, I have one more on this side. You'll see that everything is tracked nicely. The only thing we need to do is add some more, then fix some of these haloing issues that we're getting down here, and finally add some motion blur. What I will do is I'll grab the new asset that we've just imported, and we'll drag it onto the timeline, make it 3D, come to my position, and I will simply copy the position data from the one that's closest to the one we're working with right now. I will rotate this asset because as you can see, we're not looking straight at it anymore. So we gotta be looking at the Y rotation, which is the second one. I'm going to scale it up to about 150, 140, and I will move it over. Now the next thing to notice is the light direction. I'm gonna add a gamma control and boost the light so we can see that the light is coming from the right side which seems to be matching with everything that we've got going on. I'm adding this over there and I will make a mask. It's a bit on the rougher side. Subtract. About 350, 360. And we're going to be playing a bit with the mask expansion. Now, the first thing that I'm noticing is that the colors are not completely matching. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to use a curves adjustment. I go into the blue and I will lower the blue a bit. And then I will go into a vibrance and lower that a bit more until 20. There you go, that seems to be working. Add one more duplicate of our Luma map, just so we can see what we're doing. And that looks pretty good, pretty good. And we have a hard seam on this side, which we can quickly check why. And that's because this entire tree is showing up some bright spots where they shouldn't be. But that's fine for now because we will fix that in our final Luma mask. If we look at our reference, I feel like we're getting pretty close I'm going to push this one out a bit further so that we completely occlude the little cloud that was peeking through there. That looks all right. If we move a bit further on, the next section we have is this section over here. That's a big section. This would probably be two or three different cloud assets. I will go back in and now I'm going to be looking for something that's darker than the previous one. This one seems to be all right. That, that looks quite nice. This one is pretty dark, but the light direction is opposite. But what we could do is we could flip this one horizontally, and that could work pretty well. 5-5. Five, five. I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit decrease the shadows, and this time I'm going to decrease the blacks as well. Lens correction, remove, enable, and hit OK. I'm going to import that asset. Make a 3D, select the previous layer, copy the position onto this one. Scale to 145, it's right there. So we're going to rotate a y-axis, negative, negative 290, and move this asset over. I'm going to simply move it like this, add this layer in, and I'm going to flip it on the x-axis. One more Luma layer. Let's move it down. So I've quickly moved back my shot a bit so that we can see that there's still a bit more of the tree left that we have to include. So I'm moving this layer over. And I feel like that's pretty good. Let's do a little bit of a preview here. Perfect, that looks right. All right, 
So as you can see right here, now we're already working with a pretty dark value. If I move this reference board away for a second and um, if you look at this right top corner, you can see our RGBA values and we went from uh, 0.6 all the way to 0.4. So now we're going to have to find some assets that are even darker than those. Now we saw these, these 86s. This one looks very dramatic, 71. Very dramatic and also a pretty wide one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 17. So we could actually use this to fill up a larger section. But we would have to probably darken down that layer a bit. This one is a Doom Scenario 165. It looks quite nice with the backlight. But I'm not sure if that's what we're after. 58. This one is nice because it has a little bit of a patch over here, a little bit of a uh, see-through of light, and it has a lot of darkness going on. And then this 54. Mm. Mm. So this is really the more creative part. What I'm doing right now is I'm going through these assets, I'm only looking for the dark ones. Also glancing at my reference board over here, I'm really just looking at my Mononoke shot up top and I'm looking at this shot right here. I'm just looking at these top two shots. Okay, this one works pretty well. I'm going to import that one first. I'm quickly going to mark that one red. This one, 58. That one looks good. Yeah. And then I feel like we need one more. And I'm going to give it a bet on this 65 one. Okay, we're off to the races. We've got a bright spot over there, which might be the correct spot for this final one we've just added. And then we've got a bunch of dark stuff. We have to do first is we have to follow this one up with another darker image. So I feel like I'm going to go with the 21. Now that's already looking pretty somber. So I'm thinking two more. We have this section over here and then we have that bright spot. Now for the bright spot, thinking we will go with the epic one. And then for this section behind the clouds, we can go for the 58. All right, that's it. So now let me do a quick preview. Yeah, I'm not completely feeling this last asset over here. I think maybe we can fake it by moving it up a bit. But I'm actually not really enjoying the fact that we're getting more brightness. I do think we should stay to the original plan of making the whole flow look darker. Now the one thing that I want to do is I want to maybe add even a bit more light on this right section of the image here. The way I will add the extra light is I will make a duplicate of that layer, which is already 3D. And then I will remove the mask, create a new mask that goes over this section here. Feather it for about 400 pixels. I will add an exposure adjustment and brighten it up. Now you don't want to go too crazy. Let's just make sure it just starts clicking. The difference that that made is minimal, but in my opinion, it balances out this very bright spot over here as well. Okay, so the next step. We're gonna have to fix all of these Luma mask errors. So we have some haloing issues over here 
And then later on, we have the more obvious issues, which is that our colorama is letting some pretty harsh edges peek through the darkness of these trees. First thing I will do is I will select each one of my images. I turn them all to no track mat. And now I will select all of these, my lumas, and I will delete them all except for one. Now we can also look at what our cloud assets look like without any of the footage. There you go. Cool. I'm selecting our mat. I'm moving to the front. First thing we're going to have to do is to remove the halo. The way that I like to do that is by shrink matting the black and the white. We can't really do that in a very straightforward way, but I'm going to pre-compose this layer. I'm going to move all attributes. And now we have a fresh layer with our black and white mat. Then I'm going to go in to effect, channel, set map. I'm going to make sure that it selects itself, layer 3. And use for a mat, I'm going to select luminance. Now, not much seems to have changed except for that we crunched our values a bit. But now it's making sure that white and black are the alpha mask values for our luma mat. We don't want that, we want it to be inverted. And now, as you can see, we have a transparent alpha mat from our luma mat. What we can do now is actually pretty cool. We can go in into the mat options and use a simple choker for example and we can choke out our luma mask. We'll have to go to about 0 0.7 maybe. There you go. I do want to still play around a bit with our colorama controls so I'm going to lock this layer, double click my second layer and move it to the side. Now we are inside of the colorama layer, which we can tweak. Cool, there you go. That looks all right. Now inside of here, I'm just going to increase the simple choke by 0.1. So the next thing I will do is I will select all of my images and I will select my camera, I'll drag them down over here and I will pre-compose them. New attribute and I'm going to call this a sky dome. We can then simply alpha mat our top layer. So I guess we have to alpha invert it. That looks almost correct. It looks correct in most places. Now the places where I'm noticing that it's still not completely working are these big trees in the front. I can see that what they have is they've got some ghosting going on there. So I will duplicate this layer, create a mask all the way around this section that is not completely working. I will then put a few keyframes for this mask. And I'm going to come into my colorama settings and I will change them. We can see that this has been fixed. What we haven't fixed yet is this little piece of the tree up top. That's this tree. I'm going to make another duplicate. This time I'm going to come into my masks and I'll make three keyframes for this section. Perfect. I will kill the first mask and we're going to change the colorama. There you go, that looks better. Let's look at the big tree problem. This tree seems to be solved and these little trees here still need some fix-ups. But these ones over here, they're actually pretty good. Let's go back in and again we can see we've got some ghosting going on. Well, that's pretty close. 
So the next thing we will do is we will add a bit of a light wrap around this edge over here. And the way I will do that is I will duplicate this layer, our mat, and I will duplicate our original video clip. Now, the original video, I'm going to alpha with the mat. You see what we have is just the video without the sky. Now I'm going to pre-compose both of these. I'm going to duplicate the alpha one more time and I will alpha invert that same thing. Now, essentially what we've done is we've uh, cut it out from both sides and what we're left with is just a little bit of a line. So I'm going to use my simple choker on my alpha to boost that up and now we have this line. I'm going to pre-compose these one more time and I will add a Gaussian blur. Repeat edge pixels and let's make it like 30. I will go then, put it to add, and there you go. That looks absolutely horrendous. So we put the opacity down to 10. Now we will duplicate it, put the Gaussian blur to about 60. And I'm going to duplicate it one more time. I'm going to put the Gaussian blur to 120. Cool. Now I'm going to go into the Sky Dome right here and I'm going to enable the motion blur and I'm going to enable the motion blur for all of these layers. Now the final thing that I would like to do is I'm going to go into my Sky Dome and I'm going to lower the opacity. Now one of the reasons why I like to do that is because it's always great with skies to introduce some of the original background. I'm going to go to a 75% opacity. Now what that will do is it will reintroduce some of the essential details that we completely lost in Orgamma Crunch, like all of these branches up top and some of these electricity towers all the way in the back. There are two more things we have to do and then this long tutorial will finally come to an end. The first thing we'll have to do is add a camera lens blur to our sky dome to correctly match the blur intensity that we have in our background elements. And finally, what we have to do is add some noise to the skies so that they match the noise on the footage down here. Well, the way that I will do it is I will go to Sky Dome, go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Camera Lens Blur. We don't exactly know what the settings will be for the camera blur. But I do know that if you come to the Blau Films website and you go to the About page and then to Eric Alcaraz, our cinematographer, he has an article on here, Sigma Cine Prime Lenses and Canon C700. And in here they talk about the beast of a camera they were using to shoot this actual sequence. Now, in here he talks about using the Sigma T15 Cine Primes. I'm not familiar with the lens, but from this website, I'm sorry for the Dutch, I can see that it has nine blades in the diaphragm. So the shape is not going to be a hexagon, it's going to be a nonagon. Let's see if we're using something related to anamorphic, but we are not. We are not. If we were, we would have to change the aspect ratio on the blur. We don't, so we're good. I'm going to get the background footage back in here for a second. I'm going to zoom in. Now. Our sky is further away than these furthest away details. So they are quite blurry. So I would say maybe a four, and then we will use repeat edge pixels. Cool. Now let's add the noise and we're done. I'm going to duplicate the alpha mat. I'm going to create a new solid. We're going to come in here and we're going to type in 50% or 50% gray, make a comp size, and we're going to alpha invert it with the mat. Great. Now I'm going to come into noise and grain, add grain, change this to final output, and I'm going to zoom in to about 400% to see what our grain pattern looks like. In the darks, we can see it here. It's very tiny. It's very tiny. So I'm going to lower the size to about 0.5. Oh, it's too small. Let's make it 0.8. And then the 
color of the grain. I'm going to lower the saturation to about half. And now we're going to put it to soft light. And the only thing that does is add the grain into the footage. Nothing more, nothing less. The only thing I'm going to do before rendering is just adding an adjustment layer with some color correction. Um, but right now you can just export this and send it to your color grader. And, you know, they would deal with it. Woo! All right, that's it. Ah, that took way longer than expected to explain, but you know, that's it. That's uh, that's how to create a 3D tracked sky replacement that makes your scene dramatic. Thanks a lot for watching. I really, I really, really appreciate it if you stuck through this entire long video, and uh, leave a like. Leave a comment if there is anything you didn't understand, if you need any help with something, leave a comment if you have some ideas for next video, if there's something you want to see. Um, if you want to get your cloud assets, remember, go to uh, the ArtStation store, there's a link in the description below, and use this coupon code that's on the screen right now to get 20% off. And uh, yeah, be sure to subscribe. And uh, cheers, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.